3D printed Warhammer models is mostly done on resin printers in 2023. So is there even still a need for FDM printers in our hobby? You can 3D print terrain on resin printers and if you're on a budget, you could buy some MDF terrain. So when Longer reached out to me to review their latest LK4X, I decided this was the perfect opportunity to answer this question. I've seen it countless times before, whenever I upload a video about how you can save huge amounts of money by 3D printing your Warhammer models, there's always that one guy that says that he has had an absolute nightmare. It's been such a hassle, a big headache, and he's sworn off 3D printing altogether, only to find out that he's been using an FDM printer from five years ago. In this day and age, if you're wanting to 3D print your minis, then resin is the way to go in my opinion. But there are some things that resin just can't do efficiently from a cost and a size perspective. After setting up the LK4X, which was super easy to do in all honesty, because it comes out of the box 95% assembled, all I had to do was just screw in some screws and connect some cables. But then came the task that I've been treading this whole time, the bed leveling. Even though it has a auto leveling system on it and I think I could probably just let the machine level itself. I have seen so many posts throughout my research saying that you should really manually level the bed first. So after getting a piece of paper and working out which way the screws make the bed go up and down, I got the bed leveled in about five minutes or less. I done the inaugural printing of the Benchy model. Much like the Rook model for resin printers, the Benchy model is many people's first print and there's a good reason for it. Your Benchy can show you adjustments that you need to make in your printer settings. If things like excessive stringing is happening or if you're going to have problems with like small overhangs. For information, I used Esun Black PLA Plus, which was about £15 on sale for one kilogram and I had the nozzle temperature set to 205 degrees and the bed temperature set to 60 degrees. My Benchy was an absolute success. There was very minor stringing, but after looking at a lot of posts, that seemed to be quite normal. So after my two-year-old stole it for her toy collection, I then started to look at other things that I could print. Now this was my biggest problem because I got analysis paralysis trying to pick out what terrain files I wanted to print first. I kept seeing a term used over and over and it was face mode. I can't say it, I, I don't know how to say it. Like a, a faz, like a faz. See those flowers, can you put them in the face? In the faz, in the, in the faz, face? And it was fast mode. I can't say it, so it's F-A-S-E mode. <laughs> Vaz. Now bear with me because I've just realized while recording that I can't actually say this word. Vaz. So I'm just going to call it the mode. So one benefit of FDM printing is using the mode, which is also known as single wall printing. And it's called the mode because it's used to print tall, thin objects in a circular motion, much like a vase. In the mode, the 3D printer will print a single continuous spiral of plastic instead of the normal way which is building up by layer by layer. So what this actually means for me and you is that it will take less time and also use less filament. So to use the mode in Cure, which is what I decided to slice my files with, you have to go into the special settings and then select spiralize outer layer. It is important to note however that this mode isn't really ideal for every print because it's only ideal for, like I said, the prints that are tall, thin, and in a circular motion. Whereas if you're gonna try and print something that's got like a lot of like intricate details or like sharp corners to it, or if it needs to actually be strong as well. Luckily, those STLs that are optimized for the mode are marketed that way. I came across these Roads of Perdition floor tiles, which honestly I think will be great for like planning out a whole battlefield. And also for me personally, it's gonna be great for like backdrops for models. It's gonna make it more interesting, add more depth to each shot. But they recommend using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle and the LK4X comes with a 0.4 millimeter, which I think is pretty standard across all of them. But after doing some digging, I found one post from them that said that a 0.4 millimeter should work. It's just not optimized for it. So I decided let's just do it. We'll print off one and we'll see how it goes. These floor tiles only took 24 hours to complete and they only used 150 grams of filament. So that works out at about one pound 75. Using this mode got me questioning into what other type of terrain pieces could I print. So after some digging around and looking through the old files from the old mega that used to be around, I found a bunker from the yesteryear. While this was printing, 
I started to think back about the runes that I printed for my ultimate starter box set. The big problem that I had was that this was the biggest piece that I could fit onto my printer. And I use a Saturn, so we're not talking about a small printer at all. I've always wanted big grand rune buildings for my terrain. So I came across these cathedral pieces from TX Gallery Factory. Sorry, I probably butchered your name. There is small rune pieces that are quite similar to what I've already printed, but they have more of a gothic flair to them. And they also have big pieces that fit perfectly on the print bed. Also a huge benefit for these models is that they're optimized to not need supports is great. I like to have choice and priority in my hobby and that's probably why I've printed off more than eight armies. So one terrain piece that I've been obsessed with for quite a while is industrial walkways. I came across these ones from Bad Monkeys and their Space Hulk collection which definitely sparks joy and brings really great inspiration for future projects. I printed the floor tiles which again didn't need support so that was great but now I have to print off the pillars and the staircase and I'm pretty sure I will need supports for it. So I actually messaged the creator themselves, Bad Monkeys, on Instagram just to ask, is there any advice on how to print this and could I print it on the bed or do I need supports? Unfortunately, whenever I messaged him, it was New Year's. So he's probably off on holiday because I didn't get any word back until late last week. So I actually went ahead and decided to try and print it on the bed and see if it would work or not. How wrong was I? I stopped the print after seeing how bad the bridging was and I'll be honest, I got really nervous about wasting like a whole day's worth of printing. I bit the bullet and turned on the support option in Cura and I picked three supports. After one click, all the supports are done. I don't, it, it's nothing like resin printing. It's literally, it's like all the supports on steroids. It's great. And I think this is going to be the last prints that we're going to make out of this roll. Now you can see here that the staircase, this one is fully formed and this one just hasn't quite. And you might be asking, why would you stop there then? Well, simply I ran out of filament and this printer has a pretty neat function where it tells you if you change or if you ran out of filament so you can change it. My honest review of this printer is that it's absolutely fantastic. All I've heard about FDM printing is about all of this tinkering that you have to do. And literally, I got the printer out of the box, stuck on a print, and it's worked fine. So it's just been an absolute breeze, and I'm really kicking myself that I didn't get one like a year or two ago. Now saying that, could I spend time and calibrate it to get it even more precise and more smooth? Of course I could, but will I? Probably not because I am more than happy with the quality that's coming out of the box. And now I can actually start looking at printing off some functional things for the house. My wife has already given me a small list of things that she would like to see. But what I'm thinking is some cool props for videos for the background. So maybe she'll have to wait a little bit. Oh, maybe some tanks. Oh, maybe some terrain that won't cost me £130 to board. Hmm. If you haven't already, then please subscribe. It really helps me get more opportunities like this because recently I reached out to every 3D printing company and I got laughed at because I didn't have 10K subs. For whatever reason, they think if you have 10K subs, then you're good to go. And if you want to see more in depth of the terrain that I've already made from my resin printer, then you need to watch this video next because I made the ultimate starter box set for 3D printing and I saved a fortune. I want to give a huge thanks to all my Patreon members and my YouTube members because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do any of this at all. And if you want to join the best Discord in the universe, then consider becoming a Patreon.